Today I'm going to be talking about the very soon to be released Ant-Man. It's the latest instalment in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so it's going to have links to other films um, that have already come before and the ones that are coming up in the future. Instead of doing a step-by-step -step breakdown of what we've seen in the trailers so far, I'm just going to talk about things that we've learned from the trailers and what we know is going to be happening in the film. The Ant-Man in this film is going to be Scott Lang, who in the comic world is the second person to take up the role of Ant-Man, the first being Hank Pym, which I'll get onto in a minute. Scott Lang is being played by Paul Rudd, so immediately we can assume that the role is going to be played in quite a sarcastic and funny way, as he has done in many of his other roles before. This leads us to believe that the film is going to be quite light-hearted, and maybe a bit of comic relief from some of the films that we've seen previously in the MCU, and in contrast to the Daredevil TV show we've seen recently. Hank Pym is in this film as well, he's being played by Michael Douglas, so he's an older Hank Pym. If he ever was the Ant-Man in this cinematic universe, then he is no longer, and he is passing that torch onto Scott Lang for some reasons that we don't really know what they are at the moment. We know that there are going to be some flashback sequences, so we might be able to see Hank Pym as Ant-Man as he was in the past. In these flashback sequences, it's rumoured that we might see characters that we've already encountered before, such as Peggy Carter, Captain America, and even Bucky Barnes. Hank Pym's company, Pym Industries, is around as well, but it looks like Hank Pym himself isn't taking an active role in the company itself. There are a couple of shots in the trailers that we see people inside Pym Industries, and there's a portrait of Hank Pym on one of the walls. So it looks like he's just the name of the company and not really anything else. Going on from this, the company itself appears to be being run by someone called Darren Cross, who's being played by Corey Stahl. We know from the trailers that Darren Cross is going to be taking on the role of Yellow Jacket and the main baddie of this film. In the comics, Yellow Jacket is another persona taken on by Hank Pym when he's uh, retired the Ant-Man role for a while. So it's good to see that we've got two characters from the Ant-Man lore in the same film. They've obviously changed the story to be able to incorporate both characters, so it will be quite interesting to see how they deal with that. The character of Hope Van Dyne is also in this film, being played by Evangeline Lilly. She is the daughter of Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne, who in the comics is otherwise known as the Wasp. Um, she also uses Hank Pym's Pym particles to shrink down his size and she grows wings and can shoot laser blasts out of her hand. Uh, there hasn't been any talk of who is playing Janet Van Dyne at all. There is rumours that we will see her in flashback episodes, so possibly she has died at some point or she's gone missing. We don't know at this point. This might be why Hank Pym is bringing on Scott Lang to help him. He might be on a mission to find out what happened to his, his wife or his ex-wife. But if not, then we've got Hope Van Dyne who it's very likely will be taking on the role of Wasp in future. I think there's been a couple of interviews with Kevin Feige where he's commented on the fact that the Wasp will be featured in future MCU projects. So it's more than likely that Evangeline Lilly will be taking on that role. So those are the main characters, ones you would expect to be in this film to be honest. There are other things we've learnt from the trailers such as Scott Lang's motivation. In the comics, Scott Lang's daughter Cassie Lang is ill and he takes on jobs to try and get money to fund her medical care or find a cure for what she's got. Um, we don't know if she's going to be ill in this but they appear to be giving him the same motivation in the film that they have in the comics. There's a voiceover from Hank Pym in one of the trailers talking to Scott Lang where he says that he can be the hero that his daughter believes him to be. So his daughter is very much Lang's motivation in this film. It looks to be a heist film as well because they talk about breaking into a place and stealing stuff whether that's the Ant-Man suit itself or whether it's just other technology we don't know. We're assuming they're going to be breaking into Pym Industries because Darren Cross slash Yellow Jacket appears to be the baddie of this film and he has adapted the technology that Pym has used to create his Ant-Man suit um, to make his own Yellow Jacket suit. In the trailers, we see both Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket in varying sizes, so they both have the ability to shrink and grow at will. There is some explanation to Ant-Man's powers in some of the trailers. When he shrinks down to Ant-Man's size, he obtains super strength, and as can be seen in one of the scenes where he's fighting some security guards and appears to be able to pick up a guy by the collar and throw him through a window. It looks like Darren Cross is wanting this technology to be able to sell to the highest bidder. There's a, a scene where he appears to be pitching to a group of people and he talks about imagine a soldier being the size of an insect. So it's obviously got military applications, this technology. Hope Van Dyne appears to be the one that's going to be training Scott Lang to use his powers. There's a scene where Scott and Hope appear to be sparring or working out together and Hope says that he needs to learn how to punch. So she punches him directly in the face. Another example of how we know this film's going to be pretty light-hearted. 
And we've seen a display of some of Ant-Man's powers. I've talked about the shrinking ability already, which is the most famous of the Ant-Man powers. Then next comes his ability to communicate and telepathically control ants. That is featured quite heavily in some of the trailers. When he's in ant form, he appears to be able to use a flying ant as transportation. And there's a few shots of him running around with loads of ants all at the same time and forming different shapes to help him out, especially from being flushed down a plug hole, it appears. It looks like they're staying pretty close to the comic in terms of the character of Scott Lang and Ant-Man. The Ant-Man suit looks fairly similar to the one featured in the comic. And I really like how they've got two versions of Ant-Man in the same film, Hank Pym and Scott Lang. And I'm quite interested to see how they're going to interact and the explanation they've got as to why Hank Pym isn't using the telonchi himself. Or at least not anymore. Overall, this film looks like it's going to be an action-heavy film with lots of comedy in it, which I'm quite excited to see. We haven't seen a film like that in the MCU properly since the first Iron Man. Iron Man 2 and 3 to a lesser extent have the same sort of thing but uh, this is a fresh character, it's not one we've seen before in the MCU so it'll be good to see how Paul Rudd takes this role on. This is perfectly portrayed by the fact that in one of the trailers there seems to be a fight between Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket on a child's train set. Yellow Jacket gets run over by Thomas the Tank Engine but then the camera pans back and you see the train itself falling off the train track. So even within an action sequence, there's going to be a lot of comedy aspects. Um, so it's actually going to be quite a fun film, I think. I know this trailer talk is very late in the day, as the film actually had its world premiere last night. But us in the UK, we haven't got it yet. So I've still got some time to get this in before the film actually starts. If you're still unsure about going to see this film, just go and see it purely because it's one of the MCU films. And they've confirmed that it's going to be linked into all the other films. Ant-Man, or at least... Scott Lang is going to be making an appearance in Captain America Civil War, so that should just give you some evidence as to how committed they are to this particular character. I, for one, am definitely going to go and see the film when it comes out, so there'll probably be a review of it on here at some point. But until then, stay tuned for the next trailer talk.